Hello and welcome to the gallery. My name is Yon and today we are gonna paint up the Warcry terrain from Red Harvest. Warcry. Now in this video here, I took a look at what was inside the Warcry Red Harvest box and there was a lot of plastic in there, and I mean a hell of a lot. So we assembled it and we are starting to paint it now, and it's not that technical to paint, it takes a bit of time, but if you just put on a good audiobook or listen to some funky jams, then it shouldn't be that much of a problem. And here we have the train. We'll be focusing on mainly these bits when we're painting it, just for the video, but everything is painted in a similar fashion, because like I said, it's quite straightforward. I'm using an airbrush now, but of course you could do this with a regular dry brush, a little bit of dry brushing from underneath or something like that. I'm starting out with a Corvus Black uh, base paint, and then I'm just putting in a little bit of red, uh, black red from Vallejo underneath, just to get a little bit of extra red tone to fit in with the gaming board. Also, I'm airbrushing a little bit of red into the Veronite dust, the sludge thing that's in there, and just spots here and there, just to tie it in with the board, get this little bit red feeling going underneath because we will be dry brushing over it but this will give us a tone to work with that's underneath all that dry brush thing that we'll be doing and most of this will be done with a dry brush the the wood and the stone the metallics a little bit more different but a dry brush is the main thing we're starting out with a little bit of a khaki color just to get some depth to the stone we're keeping them quite dark because the board is quite dark but we're using this khaki color on both the wood and the stone and then afterwards we're putting in a little bit of a lighter dark tan color mainly on the stone just to differentiate between the wood and the stone but uh, try to focus it up and down mainly down a little bit side to side just to get a little bit of extra shadows going but you have to go this and here and there with it because the terrain is quite complex looking but it's simple to paint and now we're using the dark tan like i said and that's just for the stone just to put a little bit of difference between stone and wood it's quite simple to do all the stone and the wood parts it takes a bit of time like i said because there's such a lot of parts of this is 40 pieces of terrain or something like that and all of them have a lot of detail either a lot of stone a lot of metal or a lot of wood so every piece takes a little bit of time but it doesn't add up to that much if you just focus it on also i'm putting this dactan on all the skulls and the skeletons just to keep it simple we could have used a different color but why would I pick out a similar different color just to add a little bit more to my painting time? This is a board to play on. It's not a showstopper or anything like that. And then just to put in a little bit of extra touch between the wood and the stone. A little bit of null oil here and there. If you feel like some place is a little bit too dark, just put a little bit of null oil there. Water it down if you want to or use a medium. But just to, a little bit of dabs here and there just to give it a little bit of extra depth and maybe darken it down a little bit again because we're going for quite a dark themed terrain here. Now the metals are going to be a little bit different although there is quite a lot more of the wood and the stone and the bone and everything like that. There's a a lot more detail in the metal so we're starting out with just blocking in the bigger colors and it's okay if it's a little bit slapdash if the undertone shows a little bit through because that is black with maybe a little bit of hint of red or brown or something to it and then we have to go with a finer brush and hit all those little brackets here and there those hinges and on the bigger terrain pieces that's quite a lot of metal that you have to paint a lot of struts a lot of different bolts and nuts and whatever but uh, i'm using uh, the 
Let Belcher set a little paint. It's a nice, easy-going paint. I've thinned it down a little bit with uh, some uh, medium and or airbrush, uh, airbrush uh, medium, just to have it flow a little bit better. And then it's basically just brushing it on all the places where it needs to go, and that's a lot of places where it needs to go. Also, for gold, I'm using gold, uh, an airbrush gold from Alejo. It's a little bit thin, so the undertone shows quite a lot through. I had to go in, in a few places, I had to put uh, two, maybe three coats to get a somewhat decent look to it because it was showing a little bit too much of the undercoat. But that's fine, it's a nice gold color. It's it's a little bit more dull than m many of the Citadel gold colors, and that's why I used it. As you can see, it's quite thin there, but Hey, maybe I should have sh shooken it better. Maybe it's just better through the airbrush. I don't know, but I will test it later on. And then my favorite thing to make all the metals look a little bit older. I mix basilicon and gray and contrast medium together 50-50. And I brush it over all the silver bits. It's okay if it goes a little bit into the red. And all the gold bits. And maybe not have it go too much overboard we don't want it on all the brown colors so that we already put that put down the brown khaki colors but there's a lot of bits to go over and if you miss one you will notice it because the other ones are all dulled and darkened and look a little bit old and worn and the other ones will look really really shiny so it's easy to go over it afterwards but and like I said, this is, of course, you could use null oil or whatever you want, or eye cracks or shit. This is a theme I like. It makes it a little bit more beaten and weathered without feeling rusty or something like that. But rusty is, of course, perfectly viable for this. And then just a really, really, really soft dry brush of plate mail metal over all the metals, both the silver and the gold because it'll give it a little bit of worn look to the gold bits as well. And of course for the silvers, it'll make it a little bit more scraggly, which is what kind of what we want. For these pieces, the tray pieces, they're quite easy to do. For the bigger bits, there's a lot of dry brushing going, so maybe a big bit makeup brush might be a good idea for that. And now for the Varanite thing. I'm starting by dry brushing a little bit of towelite uh, ochre over it. A little bit of rough dry brushing. We're basically coloring it in with, but leaving the recesses still a little bit on the red side. After that has dried a bit, I'm using Griffhound Orange contrast paint mixed with a little bit of the Citadel Technical uh, contrast medium, and just dabbing that on, and I'll give it a nice dark red, golden, yellowy hue, which is kind of a nice look, and it fits in with the rest of the theme I'm going for. And here we have the terrain pieces. As you can see, they are a little bit muted, but I think it's a strong look on the table because that is quite powerful and it looks good on it. It looks worn and it looks old. And on these methods, you can use them for whatever terrain you want if you want a grim dark terrain. These methods, both for 40k, AOS, this or whatever, these methods are quick and they're simple and they do work and they look well halfway decent at least thank you very much for joining me here today there are links in the description for all kinds of stuff social media and various tidbits you do with it what you will as per always like share and subscribe hit that notification bell type thing and let the colors flow but until next time farewell <laughs>